بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا وبعد إخوان we've had a number of uh, complaints from both the sisters and the brothers concerning the noise levels uh, the sisters uh, many of them are unable to listen to the lectures because of the noise levels either of sisters talking or and of the children likewise uh, in the surrounding areas I believe where the stalls are uh, there have been a number of complaints about noise levels uh, if it is between lectures then uh, it is not uh, so much of an issue but while the lectures are taking place uh, then presumably the brothers and the sisters has, have attended to listen to the lectures since that is the case, then consider uh, the affair of your brother, consider the affair of your sister. Uh, and if it is that you have only come to socialize, uh, then at least consider the one who has come to take some benefit. Uh, and if it is that uh, it is your child that is and has been creating or being a bit of a nuisance, then uh, at least try and keep the child close. I know children can be difficult sometimes, but at least try and keep your children close to you, uh, that the benefit may be received by all. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru, wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa sayyati amalina, ma yahdihi allahu fala mudillala, ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاتي ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد There is no doubt أيها الإخوة The topic of Jannah Its sifat, its descriptions Its people and that which Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared within it is from the most important of the topics to the believer. Since his striving, his living, his dying is upon the establishment of Tawheed. And that which Ahlul Tawheed hope for from their Lord is the maghfirah and the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal for their aqeedah and for their actions and for their a'mal and their belief. They hope for the maghfirah, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu and they hope to earn his ridwan and his good pleasure. And their striving revolves around that since they know that the good pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal leads to his reward. And that in the hereafter, as Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ That indeed in the hereafter there is nothing but عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ Nothing but severe punishment. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ And forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal and His good pleasure. And his good pleasure, ayyuhal ikhwa, leads, as we mentioned, to his reward, al-jannah. The believer, therefore, he forsakes his bed. 
He stands before his Lord seeking Al-Jannah. He spends from his wealth and he gives from that which Allah Azza wa Jal has given to him. Even if he is poor, seeking Al-Jannah. He performs Umrah, he performs Hajj and partakes in this great Sha'ira and this great act of worship, spending his wealth, exerting himself, seeking Al Jannah. And the one who stands on the plain of Arafat, on the day of Arafat, and he looks around him. And he sees nothing but white garments. He sees nothing but individuals seeking Jannah. The one who fasts and forsakes himself as it relates to the pleasures that he ordinarily partakes in. Food, drink, enjoying his spouse. He or she sacrifices his own desires seeking al-jannah and so the living and the dying and every single thing the muslim and the believer is patient upon he does so seeking jannah and thus it is from the elementary elements of our our aqidah and our belief that we believe in Jannah and that the two of them are present as we speak that is Jannah and the Nar and that they exist and that Allah Azza wa Jal continues to increase the pleasures and the bounties and the bliss of Jannah just as he increases the fire and the torment and the horrors of the hellfire. Similarly, it is from our aqidah that we believe that Jannah is above us. That Jannah, it exists above us. Without doubt, it is from the affairs of the unseen. And thus, it is not something that we are able to comprehend. As far as the direction above, the na'am, we're acquainted with that. And it is not possible for us to attempt to comprehend where Jannah is by looking at and reflecting upon the stars and the celestial bodies that are above, that are above us. Since everything that we see above us, all of the galaxies, all of those stars that are many light years away, every single star, every single galaxy, all of them exist in the lowest heaven. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that He has beautified Sama dunya, the lowest heaven, bi masabih, with stars. And thus everything that we see above us and everything that astronomers study all exist in the lowest heaven. As far as that which is above that from the heavens, their nature, how they exist, their size, then that is not something that we are privy to and that we have knowledge of. Though the Prophet Sallallahu did inform us and has informed us of something from the distance between the heavens and what have you, but their realities, then Ikhwan, that is not something that we have detailed knowledge concerning. But all of those heavens that exist above us, Jannah is above them. And we should not confuse between the Sama and Jannah. And that is oftentimes a confusion that occurs because of the various confusions that may take place with the English language. That Sama is oftentimes translated 
as heavens. And that is a reference to that which is above us from the skies, the various levels of sky. But do not confuse between the Sama and between Jannah. The Sama is one affair and Jannah is another. And so the affair of Jannah, it exists above us and Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared within it for his righteous servants. From the greatest and the most beautiful forms of bliss. Wallahi, ikhwan, the hour that we have is nowhere near sufficient for us to discuss the affairs that are present within Jannah. The Prophet وسلم, informed us of the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal had mentioned, أعدد لعبادي الصالحين ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر that indeed I have prepared for my righteous servants ma la aynun ra'at that which no eye has seen and that is no eye not the eyes of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam neither the eyes of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam na'am the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was shown some of Jannah and he was and had displayed to him <coughs> from the bliss of Jannah <coughs> and from its delights. But indeed, within Jannah, there is that which no eye has seen. Ikhwan, in the dunya that we live in, there is that which no eye has seen. And that which no ear has heard in this dunya. Since there exists regions, whether in the heavens or beneath, beneath, the, earth, beneath the oceans, that mankind have not been able to traverse through and to reach. And thus there exists animals that we continue to discover on a daily basis, an aquatic life that is continuing to be discovered. If that is the case with this dunya, the dunya that means nothing to Allah Azza wa Jal, not the janahu ba'udha, as the Prophet Sallallahu has mentioned, not a mosquito's wing does this dunya mean to Allah Azza wa Jal. That is the case with this dunya then how then will the case be with Jannah? ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر that which no eye has seen which indicates that from the delight, delights of Jannah is that which Ahlul Jannah will marvel over they will receive bliss from looking at certain things within Jannah. Similarly indicating from the, that from the delights of Jannah are things that are audible, sounds are from the delights of Jannah. And it has not occurred to the heart of any individual. There is no human being that would have conceptualized the things that are present in Jannah. Not possible. Just as Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, he mentioned that there is nothing in Jannah from the affairs of the dunya that are the same except in name. The only thing that is the same, ikhwan, are the names. So we will be familiar with rumman, with pomegranate, and with bananas and the various fruits that are present within Jannah, the low trees and other than that, rivers. 
water, honey, milk. Now I'm we're familiar with that in the dunya. But know that the affairs, ikhwan, are not the same. And so one should not reflect or think, mathalan, when he reads those verses. Like the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Mathalul Jannati Lati Wa'id al Muttaqoon. Fiha anharum min ma'in, Gayri asinin, Wa anharum min lebanin lam yata gayr ta'mu. Wa anharum min asalin musaffa. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ عَصَلٍ مُصَفَّى وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ That the example of Jannah that Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared for the muttaqeen In it are anhar, in it are rivers of water that are not affected and do not change. Rivers of milk that do not go stale. Rivers of milk that are not likewise affected. Rivers of wine Exquisite for those who drink. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ عَسَلٍ مُصَفَّى And rivers of pure honey. Those rivers, أيها الإخوة, نعم, they are of affairs that we are acquainted with. Milk, water, honey, wine. But the affairs are not the same. And so Ibn Abbas brings that reality clear to us, Ikhwan, that nothing from the affairs that are present within the dunya and those affairs that are in Jannah, none of them are the same except in name. And we will see, Ikhwan, how some of the affairs and some of the narrations that have been mentioned concerning Jannah and the affairs within Jannah, without doubt, are very different, Ikhwan, to that which are present within the dunya. As far as Jannah is concerned, ayyuh al-ikhwah, then from the first of the things that we will mention that relate to Jannah are the abwab and other doors of Jannah. Since if we're describing the abode of bliss, from the first of the things that we should look at is that which is related, ikhwan, to its doors. There are a number of narrations that discuss the doors and the abwab of Jannah. As far as the abwab of Jannah, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned, as occurs in the Hadith of Abi Huraira, radiyallahu anhu, he mentioned, "Man anfaqa zawjain fi sabilillah nudiya min abwab al Jannah ya abd ya abd Allah." هذا خير فمن كان من أهل الصلاة دعي من باب الصلاة ومن كان من أهل الجهاد دعي من باب الجهاد ومن كان من أهل الصيام دعي من باب الريان ومن كان من أهل الصدقة دعي من باب الصدقة Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, he said that no individual uh, uh, has, or no spouses, or no individual has two wives. And so he spends upon them, fi sabilillah, except that he is called from the abwab of Jannah, from the doors of Jannah. Uh, and here, the affair then, is in reference, Ikhwan, to the one who spends in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that a call would be made to him, Ya Abdullah, O oh, servant of Allah. Khair. For you is good and for you is khair. 
whomsoever was from the people of Salah, then they will be called from the door of Salah. Whosoever was from the people of Jihad, then they will be called from Babel Jihad. Whosoever was from the people of Siyam, of fasting, then they will be called from the door known as Rayyan. And whosoever was from Babu Sadaqa, whomsoever was from the, from the people of Sadaqa, from Ahl Sadaqa, they will be called from the door of Sadaqa. So Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, Bi Abi Anta wa Ummi ya Rasulallah. Ma ala man du'ya min tilka al abwab min durura. Fahal du'ya ahadum min tilka al abwab kulliha. He questioned, Is there and will there be anyone that will be called from those doors, all of them? And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Naam. وَأَرْجُوا أَن تَكُونَ مِنْهُمْ He said, yes. And I hope that you will be from them. As far as the expanse, ikhwan, and the size of the doors of Jannah, then we have a number of narrations. From those narrations, we have the statement of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that occurs in the hadith of Abi Huraira, رضي الله عنه, that is muttafakun alayh, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِي إِنَّمَا بَيْنَ مَسْرَاعَيْنِ مِنْ مَسْرَاعَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ مِنْ مَسَارِعِ الْجَنَّةِ لَكَمَا بَيْنَ مَكَّ وَهَجَرْ أَوْ كَمَا بَيْنَ مَكَّ وَبَصْرَةِ He said, by him in whose hands is the soul of Muhammad, Indeed, that which is between the Masra'ain. And the Masra'ain is a reference to two of the door frames of Jannah. From one side of the door to the other side of the door. From two of the door frames of Jannah is like the distance between Mecca and Hajar. And Hajar, Ikhwan, is a region in the middle of the Arabian Peninsula. If you envision Mecca along the, the left-hand side or the middle roughly of the left-hand side of the Arabian Peninsula, Hajar is almost on the opposite side of the Arabian Peninsula. Or he said Basra, which is from Mecca to the top of the Arabian Peninsula. In another narration, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that indeed, ذُكِرَ لَنَا As occurs in the hadith of Utbah ibn Ghazawan, ذُكِرَ لَنَا أَنَّمَا بَيْنَ مِسْرَاعِينِ مِنْ مَصَارِيعِ الْجَنَّةِ مَسِيرَةُ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَا He said that it has been mentioned to us that the distance between one of the frames or one of the doorways of Jannah to the other side of the frame of the door of Jannah is the distance of 40 years. And in yet another narration, the Prophet ﷺ informed us of a distance of 70 years. And so Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he discusses how then do we understand and reconcile these differences? Since the difference between Mecca and Hajar or Basra is shorter than a distance of 40 years. And of course, a distance of 70 years is yet a greater distance than 40. And so how do we reconcile that? He mentioned that indeed the doors of Jannah are more than one. Just as the levels of Jannah are many. And thus, the greater one ascends within Jannah. The greater level a person reaches within Jannah, the wider the door frames and the larger the doors. And so from the doors of Jannah are those doors, ayyuhal ikhwa, that will be many years in distance and that will be made clear with the first 
of those when we when we come to the hadith and the discussion of the first of those who enter Jannah. But it should be known, Ikhwan, that the doors of Jannah are thamaniya. They are eight in number. It occurs in an authentic hadith, the hadith of Sahal ibn Sa'ad, radiallahu anhu, that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فِي الْجَنَّةِ ثَمَانِيَةُ أَبْوَابٍ فِيهَا بَابٌ يُسَمَّى رَيَّانٍ لَا يَدْخُلُهُ إِلَّا الصَّائِمُونَ he mentioned that indeed Jannah, it has eight doors. And from its doors, there is a door known as Rayyan. And the term Rayyan, Ikhwan, if a person were to say, Rawaytu, then it is a reference to him being satisfied by way of drink, that his thirst is satisfied. And this term then, is one that is used to refer to a door of Jannah, the door of the Sa'imin. And so just as they forsook their food and drink for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, then the door that they will enter is a door that indicates satisfaction from thirst. And that then is apt, Ikhwan, to refer to the door uh, of the Sa'imun and the door of those who fast as a rayyan Indeed, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he informed us of the fact that the doors of Jannah are open as we speak in the dunya and as we exist within the dunya on certain days. And that occurs in the hadith of Abi Huraira when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Tuftahu abwabul Jannah يَوْمَ الْإِثْنَيْنِ وَيَوْمَ الْخَمِيسِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا إِلَّا رَجُلًا أو إِلَّا رَجُلَانِ أو إِلَّا رَجُلًا نَعَمْ كَانَتْ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ أَخِيهِ شَحْنَا فَيُقَالُوا أَنْذِرُوا هَذَيْنِ Hadith that is collected by Imam Muslim when he mentioned that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abi Huraira he mentioned that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that the doors of Jannah are open every Yawm al and every Monday and Thursday and everyone that does not make shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal he will be forgiven he will have his sins forgiven except for a man that has between him and his brother Shahna. That there is some rancor between him and, and his brother, dispute. And so it will be said, wait for these two. Wait for these two, wait for these two. Yani leave them. Every yom, al al ithnain wal khamis, every Monday and Thursday. Similarly, the Messenger وسلم, informed us of the first of those who will enter Jannah. Who is the first individual that will set his foot in Jannah? The Prophet وسلم, he mentioned as occurs in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, Ati Bab al Jannah. Fa'astaftih. فيقال من أنت فأقول محمد فيقول الخازن بك أمرت أن لا أفتح لأحد قبلك He said that verily I will come to the doors of Jannah and I will seek for them to be opened and the custodian of Jannah will say من أنت هو يو and I will say Muhammad. And he will respond, It is for you that I have been commanded not to open these gates for anyone before you. Thus the first of those who will enter Jannah, the first to enter will be the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the khazin and the custodian of Jannah 
has been commanded not to open the doors except for the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed us, since ikhwan, we are individuals among an ummah, and many are the umam and the nations that have passed before us. The Prophet ﷺ informed us that this ummah, from the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this ummah, is that we will be more than half of Jannah. We will be more than a half of Jannah. Not only that, but from the blessings of this Ummah, upon this Ummah is that this Ummah will be the first of the Ummah to enter Jannah. Many are the nations that have preceded us. But the Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, will be the first Ummah to enter Jannah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he mentions as occurs in the hadith of Abi Hurairah, نَحْنُ الْآخِرُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَنَحْنُ أَوَّلُ مَنْ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ That indeed we are the last nation, but we will be the first يوم القيامة. We will be the first on the day of judgment. And we are the first and will be the first to enter Jannah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed us, since this ummah will be the first to enter Jannah, how will be, or how will the first group of those who enter Jannah from this ummah, how will they be? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned as occurs in the hadith of Abi Hurairah, inna awwala zumratin yadkhulun al-jannah, على سورة القمر ليلة البدر ثم الذين يلونهم على أشد كوكب دري في السماء إضاءة He mentioned that indeed the first of this ummah and the first group to enter Jannah they will enter Jannah على سورة القمر looking like the moon when it is full and then those who follow them will be like the brightest stars in the sky. Yani their faces, their wujuh. He said, لا يبولون ولا يتغوطون ولا يتفلون ولا يمتخطون he said that indeed they will not urinate. Ahlul Jannah will never urinate. Neither will they defecate. Neither will they have katar. Yani they will not have phlegm or katar as occurs to the people of the dunya, never. They will be free of such things. He mentioned Amshatuhum al Dhahab. Warashuhum al Misk. He said that indeed their combs will be of gold and their sweat shall be musk. The Prophet likewise informed us. Layadhulun al Jannah. من أمتي سبعون ألف and this is a further clarification of how they will enter ليدخلون الجنة من أمتي سبعون ألف أو سبعمائة ألف متماسكون آخذ بعضهم بعضا لا يدخل أولهم حتى يدخل آخرهم وجوههم على سورة القمر ليلة البدر. He said in relation to the first group that shall enter Jannah, they shall enter Jannah from my ummah seventy thousand, or he said seven hundred 
thousand. Mutamasikun, each of them holding on one to the other. And they will be in a line holding the hands of each other. He said, لا يدخل أولهم حتى يدخل آخرهم The first of them will not enter until the last of them enters. That is that they will all enter, that 700,000 they shall enter Jannah together at one time. And their faces will be like the full moon or the moon when it is full. The Messenger sallallahu wasallam informed us of the age of Ahlul Jannah. He mentioned as occurs in a hadith in, or the hadith that was narrated by Mu'adh ibn Jabal. يَدْخُلُ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ الْجَنَّةَ جُرْدًا مُرْدًا مُكَحَّلِينَ أبناء ثلاثين أو ثلاث وثلاثين سنة. He said that the people of Jannah they shall enter Jannah without facial hair. Similarly, without bodily hair. And that is that the people of Jannah shall not have beards. أهل الجنة shall be without facial or bodily hair. He said, and they shall be youth of 33 years old. And that is in terms of their natures, their creation. They shall be of optimal age, beautiful. That they shall be, in terms of their skin, Beautiful and radiant. In terms of their age, they shall be at a prime age. And their faces, as occurs in numerous ayat, that their faces shall be radiant upon that day. Similarly, the Messenger ﷺ informed us of the effects of our wudu as it relates to that radiance. He mentioned, Inna ummati yadkhuluna al jannata ghurran muhajjaleen min athar al wudu. Faman istata'a an yutila ghurratahu fal yaf'al. As Abu Huraira added, that indeed this umma shall enter jannah ghurran muhajjaleen. Ghurra, the ghurra and tahjil is whiteness that is in the face and the arms of some horses. And that is the description that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he gave to this ummah that they shall have radiance in their face and upon their limbs from the effects of wudu. And so Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu he mentioned to whomsoever is able to increase his ghurra then let him do so. Whoever is able to increase that radiance and that light then let him do so. Indeed ikhwan Ahlul Jannah, when they arrive at Jannah with that radiance, they shall receive an istiqbal. They shall receive a welcome. Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَادْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ And that indeed the people of Jannah shall be paraded to Jannah Zumara as, as in a delegation حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا So until when they reach and they arrive at it وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا And they find its doors open, welcoming them. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا And the custodians of Jannah shall say to them from the malaika, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ 
Salam, peace be upon you. Tibtum indeed, you were tayyib, you were good. Yani you lived a life that was tayyib and a life that was good. Fadukhuluha khalideen. They will be welcomed by the malaika and by the angels. And other narrations and ayat mention that they will be happy. The malaika will be happy welcoming them and congratulating them for being successful. After that which they went through in the dunya, after the trials and the tribulations and the hardships, after that which they went through from being patient upon taklif and upon ibadah and upon worship, being patient throughout their lives, staying away from sin, patient upon ibadah. After they were patient upon the trials and the calamities that Allah Azza wa Jal placed upon that servant in order to raise them in levels and in stations. That which they went through Yawm al Qiyamah, that which they went through in the grave, Yawm al Qiyamah, the questioning, the wurud at the hawd, crossing the bridge, crossing the sirat. That sirat that was over Jahannam, thinner than a hair, sharper than a sword, and upon its pathways are hooks and claws. And when the companions, they heard of that, they said, Sell, Allahumma sallim, sallim. Oh Allah, save us, save us. And after crossing that bridge and reaching the Qantara and that plain, after being safe from falling into the hellfire, they reach that plain where all disputes must be settled. They are then blessed to be permitted to enter Jannah. Ni'mah. And so the angels will congratulate them, welcome them. Salamun alaykum tibtum. Indeed, Ikhwan, from the sifat and the characteristics that the Messenger وسلم, informed us concerning the soil of Jannah. The Messenger وسلم, informed us, as occurs in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, Turabuha Misk. He mentioned that indeed Jannah, its Turab, its soil, is of misk and as occurs in another authentic hadith the hadith of Abi Hurairah and Sunan al-Tirmidhi the Prophet sallallahu wasallam he said turbatu hazza'faran its soil will be of saffron and so some of the soil in Jannah will be of musk and some of the soil in Jannah will be of saffron the messenger sallallahu wasallam he informed us, Ikhwan, of the dwelling places within Jannah. He mentioned that indeed, within the Jannah, there are hurun maqsuratun fil khiyam. That there are hur, that there are maidens, fair maidens, beautiful fair maidens. And we'll mention the description of them in that which is to come. Beautiful fair maidens, maqsurat, and this term maqsurat is a description to their eyes and not, or a description of their eyes, not a description of the physical characteristics of their eyes, but how they use their eyes, and that is that their eyes will not cast a glance upon another man. Maqsurat, their eyes look only upon their husbands. They have no desire and they have no concern for any man other than their husbands. And so they have no eyes except for them. Maqsuratun fil khiyam. Yani that they are hur, maidens. That will be in khiyam, in tents. And the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he informed us 
إن للمؤمن في الجنة لخيمة من لؤلؤ من لؤلؤة واحدة مجوفة طولها ستون ميلا He said that indeed in Jannah the believer he will have a khayma he will have a tent made of pearl in fact he clarified made of one pearl that will be hollowed out for him and that will be made a beautiful abode in Jannah he said its height shall be 60 miles he said, وللمؤمن فيها أهلون يطوف عليهم المؤمن فلا يرى بعضهم بعضا He said, within Jannah, the individual within Jannah, the person of Jannah, he will have families within that abode. None of them will know of the existence of the other and he will visit them all. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ informed us that in Jannah there is a souq, there is a marketplace. And of course, ikhwan, there is not one of us. Except that if Allah Azza wa Jal blesses him with something from wealth, from spare wealth, there is not one of us except that he loves to shop. <coughs> he loves to consider what is he going to do with this, with this surplus that he has. What shall he buy? New garments, new gadgets, a new car. What is it that he should buy? Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed Ahlul Jannah, Ikhwan, with something similar. But as we mentioned, Ikhwan, not the same. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned as occurs in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik. Inna fil jannati la suqan. يأتونها كل جمعة فتهب ريح الشمال فتحثوا في وجوههم وثيابهم فيزدادون حسنا وجمالا فيرجعون إلى أهليهم وقد ازدادوا حسنا وجمالا فيقول لهم أهلهم والله لقد ازددتم بعدما أو بعدنا حسنا وجمالا فيقولون وأنتم والله لقد ازددتم بعدنا حسنا وجمالا that indeed every Jumma in Jannah on the day of Jumma يوم الجمعة every يوم الجمعة there shall be a souq and a marketplace that the people of Jannah they shall attend he said, a wind shall come to them. A northerly or southerly wind shall come to them and blow upon them. And they shall receive something from that wind. And it shall blow in their faces and upon their garments. And due to it, they shall increase in beauty and in husn, in jamal and in beauty. He said, so they shall return back to their families after having increased in beauty and in Jamal, and their family shall say to them, By Allah, you have increased in beauty after us. And they shall respond to them and say, And you, by Allah, have increased after us. And he said that that shall be every Jumu'ah. And that is to say, Ayyuhal Ikhwah, that this is a phenomenon and a reality that will continue to occur every Jumu'ah forever for eternity it is something that one is unable to fathom that beauty generally in the dunya it has a had it has an extent that it reaches and khalas generally there is not much more beautiful than the beauty that we already know and that we're acquainted with but in Jannah, Ikhwan, that beauty shall continue and continue and continue and increase for eternity, a reality we're unable to fathom. The truth of the matter, Ikhwan, 
is that the realities of Jannah Ikhwan were not able to fathom. And in essence, it is perhaps that that causes us to be lax in terms of seeking Jannah and to be heedless Ikhwan and allowing ourselves to be taken by the whispers of Shaitan. Since certainly if we were to see it, and there is not one of us, Ikhwan, except that we would work day and night in order to achieve it and in order to enter it. But because of the fact that we do not see it, and the only thing that we see is soil of the dunya, are the houses of the dunya, are the men and the women of the dunya, are the fruits of the dunya, which are of course great blessings, but nothing comparable to that which Allah Azza wa has prepared in Jannah. And there are realities within Jannah, Ikhwan, again, that will be difficult for us to comprehend. From those realities, Ikhwan, that which is related to light within Jannah. As far as light within Jannah, and as it relates to the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in Surah Maryam that they will receive their sustenance morning and evening. Such is the paradise that we have given as an inheritance to those of our slaves, man kana taqiyya, those of our slaves who fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Al Imam ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions concerning the verse that this means something approximate to the times of day and night, that is, morning and evening. Since we have a mention of them receiving uh, the, their sustenance morning and evening in Jannah. He mentions that this is something approximate to the times of day and night. It does not mean that there will be a day and a night there. They will know the passing of time by the changes in light. Similarly, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions in Majmu' al-Fatawa, Volume 4, page 312, that there is no sun or moon in paradise and no day or night in Jannah. But they will know morning and evening from a light that shines from the direction of the throne. And so there is no sun in paradise. There is no moon in paradise. There is no day and night in Jannah. And that which is present in the writings of Ahl al-Ilm is that the affair will remain constant. That they will constantly receive and have illumination within Jannah. But that illumination will not be the illumination of the sun. Rather, it will be an illumination that will be present within Jannah an illumination that they will be able to withstand and withhold a beauty that will be relative, no doubt, Ikhwan to Jannah. Similarly, as it relates to the fragrance within, within Jannah, then of course, Ikhwan, we have a number of narrations that indicate that the fragrance of Jannah from its fragrances is misk. But that is not the only fragrance within Jannah since from the bliss of Jannah are flowers within Jannah and from those flowers we have Raihan Raihan Ikhwan is from the flowers of Jannah and they are beautiful uh, and they are plentiful and they let off a smell and a fragrant fragrance that Ahlul Jannah will smell and receive. In fact, a fragrance uh, that may be, may be detected numerous, ikhwan, more than 40 years as occurs in some narrations and greater than that in other narrations. As the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, whoever kills 
a man from the people who are under the Islamic rule, yani the non-Muslims living under the Islamic rule, he will not smell the fragrance of Jannah and indeed its fragrance may be detected from a distance of 40 years travel. And so the fragrance of Jannah, Ikhwan, is one that is strong and beautiful and sweet. And again, from the bliss of Jannah, Ikhwan, are those things that are detected by the senses. And so within the trees, or within Jannah, there are trees. And from those trees, ayuha al-ikhwah, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that the muttaqun, they will have gardens and they will have grapevines. That is from their trees. Allah Azza wa Jal describes its food as da'im. Ukuluha da'imun wa dhilluha. Tilka ukul ladhi alladhi nattaqaw. Tilka. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that indeed the ukul or the food of the people of Jannah is da'im. It's constant, consistent. Ahlul Il mention that from the natures in which the food and the sustenance of the people of Jannah is constant, is that the people of Jannah, they will never have trees that are in or out of season. The fruit of Jannah, Ikhwan, are always in season. Similarly, the branches of those trees Allah Azza wa Jal mentions they hang low. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, and those on the right hand, who will be those on the right hand? Indeed, they will be among thornless low trees and among palh trees with fruits piled one above the other in, sh in shade that is long and extended by water that is flowing constantly and fruit that is plenty whose season is not limited and whose supply will not be cut off. Similarly, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned in them is every kind of fruit yani within Jannah and the trees of Jannah in them is every kind of fruit in pairs. Similarly, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned that the muttaqoon, they shall be amid shade and springs and fruits such as they desire. Likewise, we have a description, ayuha al-ikhwa, of the trees and of the foliage of the trees of Jannah. The trees of Jannah shall be rich in foliage and lush. And they shall have extended spreading branches. And as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in Surah Al-Rahman, they shall be dark and green in color. Yani rich and intense in color. And that as some of Ahl al-Ilm and the Mufassirun mention is due to the density of the trees of Jannah. Their presence, the beautiful trees that shall exist. And Ahl al-Jannah shall be reclining. Allah Azza wa Jal informs us as occurs in Surah Al-Rahman, they shall be reclining upon couches lined with silk. And those couches shall be lined with silk and brocade. And from the fruits there shall be two gardens. Or they shall receive from the fruits of two, two gardens that shall be near at hand. Similarly, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, and we shall admit them among shades that are wide and ever deepening, beautiful, extensive, luscious trees, gardens, orchards, and beautiful trees, Ikhwan, that have uh, upon them fruit that are inexplicable. And insha'Allah we will mention some of the ahadith that discuss the fruit ikhwan uh, that are present within Jannah. Similarly, the Prophet sallallahu mentioned that in Jannah there is a tree yasirul raqibu fi dhilliha 
مئة سنة لا يقطعها that a riding person, a swift riding horse will ride for the period of a hundred years and not cross its shade. Similarly, the Messenger وسلم, informed us of the Sidrat al-Muntaha and it likewise occurs in an, author, in an ayah in Surah Al-Najm where Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ النَّزْلَةً أُخْرَى That indeed the Prophet ﷺ he saw Jibreel at a second descent in the Sidrat al-Muntaha near the Sidrat al-Muntaha which is the low tree of the utmost boundary beyond which none may pass near it is the paradise of the eternal abode he mentioned when that covered the low tree which covered it the sight of Muhammad وسلم, turned not aside يعني, neither to the left or the right neither did it transgress beyond the limit ordained for it indeed he sallallahu alayhi wasallam he saw the greatest sign from the signs of his lord the prophet sallallahu wasallam described and explained that sign he said then i was taken up describing the isra and the mi'raj then i was taken up until i reached the Sidrat al-Muntaha and I saw its fruits which looked like clay jars of Hajar <coughs> Hajar Ikhwan being a region its leaves were like the ears of elephants and one of those leaves could cover the whole of this Ummah one of those leaves could cover the whole of this Ummah it was veiled in colors indescribable. Then I entered paradise and its lights were pearls and its soil was musk. The Prophet وسلم, likewise mentioned when a man came asking the Messenger O oh Messenger of Allah tell us about the clothes of the people of paradise. Are they created or are they woven? And some of the people laughed. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, why are you laughing? Because someone who does not know has asked someone who does know. Then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he turned and he said, where is the one who asked the question? And so the man said, here I am, O messenger of Allah. He said, no, they are produced by the fruits of paradise. And he mentioned that three, three times. They are produced by the fruits of paradise. They are produced by the fruits of paradise. As we mentioned, Ikhwan, within Jannah, there are the best aromatic and most beautiful aromatic plants that are similarly not just ikhwan for decoration within Jannah, but the people of Jannah will receive bliss from their fragrance. He said, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or in fact Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, and there is for him, that is within Jannah, rest and provision, and raihan, which are sweet smelling plants, Rawhun wa Raihan and a Jannah of bliss, a garden of bliss. Similarly, we have in the hadith that was collected by Imam al Tabarani in Mu'jam al Kabir and declared authentic by Sheikh Nasir in Silsilatul Ahadith al Sahiha, who mentioned that indeed the best of the aromatic plants of Jannah is Henna. Henna. It is an aromatic plant from the most aromatic and beautiful of plants in Jannah. The Messenger وسلم, described the trees of Jannah. He said the trunks of the trees of Jannah, all of them are gold. There occurs Ikhwan in that authentic hadith of Abi Hurairah. There is no tree in paradise that does not have a trunk made of gold. 
Indeed, the Messenger Sallallahu Wasallam, when he went on the Isra and the Mi'raj, he met Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And Ibrahim, he said, give, my, give your ummah my salam. Convey to your ummah my salam. And tell your ummah that paradise, its land and its soil is good. And that its water is sweet, adab. And that it is an empty plain which will have planted upon it or which is cultivated by way of subhanallah walhamdulillah wallahu akbar jannah ikhwan those plains of musk and those plains of saffron they are cultivated with subhanallah walhamdulillah wala ilaha illallah and as occurs in another narration La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah is from the things that cultivate within Jannah. Every time the servant says, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, there is a tree and a plant that is cultivated for that abd within Jannah on the basis of his statement. He merely utters that in the dunya and a plant and a tree is planted for him in his Jannah. Light upon the tongue, Ikhwan, and something that many of us rarely say, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Wa la ilaha illallah. Wallahu akbar. Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. It is from that which cultivates within Jannah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi informed us that indeed he will be given Al-Kawthar. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he was asked, and what is Al-Kawthar? He said that verily it is a river that is given to me. And upon it are birds with necks like the neck of camels Umar radiallahu anhu he said these birds will be in bliss and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said those who eat them will be more blissful and that from the birds and the pheasant that are consumed by ahl al-jannah is a bird that they will consume that will have a long neck a neck that resembles the neck of the camel, it itself will be in bliss. And those who consume them will be more blissful. That is from the food or from the birds and the fowl and the pheasant that will be eaten in Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu describing Jannah, he said, in it are bricks of gold and silver, yani as it relates to the houses of Jannah in it of our bricks of gold and silver yani there will be houses a brick of gold and a brick of silver and the cement and mortar that is between those bricks are of musk there will be pebbles of pearl and sapphire the stones and the pebbles in Jannah pearl and sapphire yakhi. and its soil will be of saffron Whoever enters it will be, will be filled with joy and will never feel miserable. He will live there in forever and will never die. And their clothes will never wear out and their youth will never fade. Similarly, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, فَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّا رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا And when you look therein, you shall see Delight that cannot be imagined and a great dominion. Indeed, the Messenger Sallallahu Wasallam, he described to us, Ikhwan, a number of affairs related to Jannah and Ikhwan. We will discuss from them that which we're able to discuss. The Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he mentioned that in Jannah there are leaders. In Jannah, there are leaders. 
We will have Ahlul Jannah, but among them, there are heads and leaders. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, as occurs in the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he said, Abu Bakr and Umar, and Umar will be from the leaders of the men of paradise, from the earliest generations and from the latter generations. Similarly, <coughs> the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, since they are the leaders among the men, the Messenger informed us that they will likewise be leaders among the youth. Leaders among the, the youth. He said as occurs in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, Hassan and Hussein are from the leaders of the youth of paradise. Similarly, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi informed us of the fact that the women in paradise will likewise have leaders. He mentioned, as occurs in the authentic hadith that was collected by Imam Ahmad and likewise by Imam Hakim, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he informed of the women of paradise and their levels. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he drew four lines. And he said, do you know what these are? And so they said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said that the best women of paradise, after drawing these four lines, he said the best women of paradise are Khadija, Bint Khwailid, a Fatima bint Muhammad, a Maryam bint Imran, and a Asiya bint Muzahim, the wife of Fir'aun. Indeed, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he described that the best of the women of paradise are Maryam and Khadija. Concerning the women of paradise, Ikhwan, we'll mention that which is connected to them. Since oftentimes the sisters complain about Jannah and the description of Jannah, that why does it always seem to be male orientated? Why does it always seem and appear that the, the men are the ones that receive everything? And that everything that is present within it are for the men. Well, listen then to that which Allah Azza wa has mentioned concerning the women, if they enter. And that is first and foremost that we make a difference, ayyuh al between women that were made within Jannah and know nothing but Jannah. And they are the Hurul Ain. And those women that were from the women of the dunya that made it to Jannah. And they are greater and superior to those Hurul Ain. The Hurul Ain that Allah Azza wa Jal created in Jannah for Ahlul Jannah, the women of the dunya that make it to Jannah will be superior to them. But Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Messenger Sallallahu have mentioned that which indicates the virtue that will be given to the women of the dunya that make it to Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتِ And give glad tidings to those who believe and do righteous deeds, that for them will be gardens beneath which rivers flow. Each time they will be provided with fruit therefrom, they will say, هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقُنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ Every time they will receive fruit from it, they will say, this is that which we received before. And some of the scholars of tafsir, they say, that that is a reference to the fact that they will be given fruit in Jannah, resembling fruit that they ate earlier in Jannah, but it will be of a different taste. Though it resembles fruit that they ate earlier, it will taste different. And we will see how that is not ba'id in some of the narrations that are to come. And some mention from the scholars of tafsir 
that it is a reference to fruit that they are acquainted with and they're familiar with in the dunya, but they will only remember something from that fruit from the dunya, but the fruit of Jannah will be far superior. As we mentioned, they will be similar but not the same. The only different or the only thing that is comparable, Ikhwan, is the name. But as it, as it relates to the women of Jannah, Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentioned, وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَحَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They will have within, within it, يعني within Jannah, purified spouses. Purified spouses. Concerning the verse, that they will have within it purified spouses. Ibn Abbas and Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhuma, they said, they will not have mucus. Neither will they defecate. Neither will they urinate. Neither will they break wind. Nor have mucus. Allah Azza wa Jal will purify them from all of those things. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal will recreate them from the benefit, from the bliss of Jannah is that Allah Azza wa Jal will recreate them. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, verily we'll, we will create them of special creation. Inna ansha'na hunna insha'a wa ja'alna hunna abkara uruban atraban li ashab al Allah mentioned that verily we will create them of a special creation. Yani they will be recreated. And we will make them virgins. Loving and playful with their husbands. The ashab al Similarly, as it relates to this statement, that we will make them a special creation, Imam Ibn Kathir mentions. That is that we will renew their creation in the hereafter. After them being elderly in the dunya and having white secretion in their eyes due to old age, they will become virgins, young, elegant, beautiful, and playful with their husbands. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma he said here Allah azza wa jal intends adamiyat Allah intends adamiyat Allah intends women from Bani Adam that which will bring clarity ikhwan to the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam Elderly women will not enter Jannah. A statement that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made. And when he heard, or when he made that statement, an elderly woman heard the statement and she began to weep. She heard the statement, elderly women will not enter Jannah. She began to weep. And so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, inform her that on that day, she will not be elderly. Rather, she will be youthful. For indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal has said, Verily, we will create them of special creation. Sheikh Nasir authenticated the hadith in Ghayatul Maram, collected by Al Imam Al Tirmidhi. Similarly, from the affairs, Ikhwan, that relate to the manner in which Allah Azza wa Jal shall recreate them is that Allah Azza wa Jal shall create them as large chested maidens and that is as it relates to the statement in Surah An-Naba gardens and grapeyards and young full breasted maidens of equal age Ibn Kathir he mentions concerning the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَكَوَائِبَ أَتْرَابًا That is, 
<coughs> they will be full-breasted young maidens due to the fact that they will be virgins, loving and playful with their husbands of equal age since the people of Jannah will be of one age. As Allah Azza wa clarifies here in Surah, surah Al-Waqi'ah. Similarly, they will have beautiful clear skin. It occurs upon the authority of Abu Hurairah that the Messenger Sallallahu Wasallam, he said that her skin will be so beautiful that her marrow will be visible beneath her skin. And indeed there will be no bachelors in paradise. Again, that is something that is difficult for us to fathom. That one may say that skin that one is able to see the marrow beneath it, that is something that one may not necessarily desire, but know that its manifestation will be beautiful, extremely beautiful, and it shall be desirable. And that is because of the fact, again, that we oftentimes view things or consider and reflect upon things through the lens of the dunya. And that is something that is not possible for us to do, Ikhwan, as it relates uh, to, uh, to Jannah We mentioned the affair Of the changing of The beauty Of the men on the, on, Or during or in Jannah Every Friday That will likewise occur with the women That they will continue To be more and more beautiful Until or forever ikhwan, For eternity In the hadith of Anas ibn Malik We have a hadith that indicates Their brilliance Prophet Sallallahu he said, if a woman from the women of Jannah were to appear in this world, then that which is between the heaven and the earth will be filled with her beautiful fragrance. And they would illuminate that which is between the heavens and the earth. As occurs in some narrations, if one of the men from the men of Jannah, just a part of him, were to appear in the dunya, or were to enter the dunya, it would out, he would outshine the brightest star in the sky. Similarly, the Prophet wasallam described Ikhwan that their beauty and their brilliance is not only in their skin and in their created nature or their recreated nature, but similarly the garments that they will be made to wear. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, the scarf that is upon her head is better than the world and that which is upon it. The scarf that she wears upon her head is better and more beautiful than the dunya and that which is upon it. Indeed, Ikhwan, the description of Jannah and the things that have occurred concerning Jannah are many, Ikhwan. There are, there are numerous, and as we mentioned, an hour cannot suffice to discuss the jugs of Jannah, the, ma the maids in Jannah, the, uh, uh, the youth that will serve the people of Jannah, the, the, the uh, uh, beds of Jannah, the recliners that the people of Jannah will recline upon, the nature of the trees and the fruits within Jannah, numerous narrations and ayat and ahadith clarifying this most beautiful abode. And we'll, we'll mention, Ikhwan, that which is related to a number of ahadith that some of the brothers and sisters may not be acquainted with. That indeed there are a number of ahadith and ayat related to Jannah the jugs of Jannah, the cups of Jannah, the vessels and the goblets and the manner in which Ahlul Jannah shall recline and shall be in uh, positions and seats of opulence. We'll mention here that which is related, Ikhwan, to some of the ahadith that some of you may not be uh, as acquainted with. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, Ayyuh al That nothing in this, in this dunya, as we mentioned in that hadith uh, of uh, 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 the hadith of Abi Hurairah, that Allah Azza wa has mentioned that I have prepared for my righteous servants that which no eye has seen, 
no ear has heard and it has not occurred to the mind of any individual. And we've mentioned previously the fact that Ahlul Jannah, they shall have no bodily hair or beards and that they shall have natural kuhl upon their eyes. They shall have that which appears that their eyes have been beautified with kuhl but their eyes will naturally appear to have kuhl upon them. And the Prophet وسلم, informed us of the fact that their youth will never wear out and their garments will never wear out and their youth will never end. But he mentioned that their characteristics, Ikhwan, will be resemblant to some of the Prophets. He, sallallahu wasallam, he said, as occurs in the hadith of Al-Miqdam ibn Ma'di Karib, he mentioned that there is no one that dies as a miscarried fetus or an elderly person. And every individual is between these two. Except that he will be raised 33 years old. If he is from the people of Jannah, then he will be upon the stature of Adam. And he will have the form of Yusuf. And he will have the heart of Ayyub. And whosoever is from the people of the fire, then he will be enormous and tremendous in size like mountains. Shaykh al-Bani declared the hadith, Hassan, as occurs in Sahih, Targheeb or Targheeb. As far as the servants of Jannah, because you will, ya Ahl al-Jannah, have servants. As far as the servants of Jannah are concerned, then it occurs in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr that indeed the lowest of the people of Jannah in station, the lowest of them, will have a thousand servants. The lowest of them, Ikhwan, will have one thousand servants busily serving him. And none of them will be taking rest. A thousand servants busily serving him. Each servant will be carrying out a duty different to the other. And then the Prophet ﷺ recited the ayah. And if you, would, if you were to see them, then you would consider them scattered pearls. As occurs in Surah Al-Insan. And it was collected by Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. And declared Sahih in Sahih Targheeb wa Tarheeb. Similarly, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us of the affair of Jannah and its rivers. But he similarly informed us of the fact that within Jannah there are seas. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, in Jannah, there is an ocean of water, an ocean of milk, an ocean of honey, and, and an ocean of wine. And then the rivers of Jannah emanate from them. Oceans, Ikhwan that will be the asl and the origin of the rivers that are present within Jannah. The Messenger وسلم, informed us of the nature of those rivers. Since when we hear rivers, we oftentimes reflect upon the rivers and think about the rivers of the dunya. We'll listen then to the following hadith of Anas ibn Malik. The Messenger وسلم, he said, perhaps you presume that the rivers of Jannah are entrenched into the earth as worldly rivers are. No, by Allah, verily they flow upon the surface of the ground, over that misk and over that za'faran, over that saffron. They flow upon the surface of the ground. One of its banks is made of pearl. And another is made of ruby. 
Its soil is of adhfar misk. And so I said, what is adhfar? And so the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, pure and unmixed. And again, the hadith was authenticated by Sheikh Nasir in Sinsilatul Ahadith as sahiha The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he described the affair of the nature in which Allah Azza wa Jal has created Ahlul Jannah. As it relates, Ikhwan, to one of the bliss, one of the forms of bliss within Jannah, and that is sexual relations. Naam, from the bliss of Jannah, Ikhwan, is sexual relations. One does not withstand and withhold himself from haram in that regard in the dunya, except that Allah Azza wa Jal will reward an individual in the hereafter. <coughs> that is from the bliss of Jannah, Ikhwan, sexual relations. And it is not something that we are willing to hide. Since the Messenger وسلم, informed us of it, the companions narrated it. And it is from the things that will encourage an individual with striving towards Jannah. The Messenger وسلم, as occurs in a hadith that was collected by Ibn, Ibn Hibban, a Jewish man, approached the Prophet وسلم, and said, O oh, Abul Qasim, do you not claim that the people in Jannah will eat and drink? And so he said, yes, by he in whose hands is the soul of Muhammad. Indeed, one of them will be given the strength of a hundred men for eating, for drinking, and for sexual relations. And so the man said, but the one who eats and drinks needs to answer the call of nature. You're going to be given the strength of a hundred men, eating and drinking. You're going to need to answer the call of nature. And so the Prophet wasallam he said, when that man said, he will need to answer the call of nature, but there is nothing harmful in Jannah. Yani nothing that will cause harm even yani in terms of fragrance, najasat and these things. And so the Prophet وسلم, he said, answering the call of nature for one of them will be through perspiration. That will exit their skins with the fragrance of musk. And then their stomachs will be emptied and become lean. Similarly, the Messenger وسلم, he described to us, Ikhwan, the fruit of Jannah. How it is. And its nature. Something from some of the fruit. Upon the authority of Sulaim ibn Amir who said that the companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam, they used to say, indeed, Allah azza wa jal used to benefit us by way of the Bedouin Arabs and their questions. A Bedouin Arab approached one day and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, indeed Allah has mentioned a harmful tree in Jannah. But I did not perceive that there will be a tree in Jannah that will be harmful to its possessor. And so the Messenger وسلم, said, And what is that? And so he said, The cedar tree, the lot tree. For indeed the lot tree has harmful thorns. And so the Prophet وسلم, he responded, but didn't Allah Azza wa Jal say, among thornless low trees? As occurs in Surah Al Waqi'ah, he said, indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal will remove their thorns and will put in the place of each thorn fruits. It will indeed produce fruits. Each fruit will blossom having 72 colors of different flavors. And no color will resemble the other. Again, in, in case you didn't catch that, Ikhwan. 
In case you didn't catch that, we're going to mention it again. Didn't Allah say that they will be among thornless low trees? The Messenger of Allah said. He said Allah will remove their thorns and will put in the place of each thorn fruits. It will indeed produce fruit. And each fruit will blossom having 72 colors of different flavors. Al fruit al wahid. 72 colors of different flavors. And no color will resemble the other. But I love children, I hear you say. And I would love to have children in Jannah, I hear you say. <laughs> the Messenger sallallahu wasallam, he mentioned as occurs in the hadith of Abu Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu anhu. If the believer desires a child in Jannah, then pregnancy, childbirth, and the child coming of age will occur in an instant. And the child will be just as they desire. Just as they desire. You will not have to do this to those children. <laughs> or this. <laughs> just as they desire. You will never have to give that child that look. Or point, or grab him, or make him sit down, or anything other than that. They will be just as those individuals with Jannah desire. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, Ikhwan, and I hear you say, Ma la ra'at wa la sami'at, as we mentioned. Then where are the sounds within Jannah? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, Ikhwan, that from the bliss within Jannah are sounds. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that indeed in Jannah there is a river, the length of Jannah. Along both of its banks, there are maidens standing facing each other, just specially for Jannah. From the beginning, from one end of Jannah to the other end of Jannah. A river that cuts through the whole of Jannah. He mentioned that on one side of its banks, or along both of its banks, there are maidens standing facing each other. And they will sing in the most beautiful voice the creation has heard. To the extent that they will not believe that there is a pleasure in Jannah like it. And that is not just for the men in Jannah. For the men and the women. That is not specific to the men. The singing is a bliss and a pleasure and a, a bliss for the ear. He mentions that indeed they will not believe that there is a pleasure from the pleasures of Jannah. They will not believe <coughs> that there is a pleasure in Jannah like it. And so we said, Subhanallah, what is that singing? And he responded, if Allah wills, it will be tasbih. Yeah, and he's saying, subhanallah. Tahmeed, saying alhamdulillah. Glorifying and praising our Lord, the exalted. And this, ikhwan, wallahi, there were narrations, ikhwan, many narrations that I had intended uh, to mention. But no doubt, the waqt and the time is now mutaakhir. The time is late. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, Ikhwan, uh, we are possibly not going to be able 
to discuss and mention all of the narrations uh, that I, I intended to mention. Uh, but we will mention, though, uh, one or two more narrations and round up, inshallah. But riding beasts, I hear you say. Horses in Jannah. Upon the authority of Abu Ayyub, radiallahu anhu, who mentioned that a Bedouin Arab came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, O Messenger of Allah, indeed I love horses. Will there be horses in Jannah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if you enter Jannah, then a horse made of ruby with two wings will be brought to you and you will be carried upon it and it will fly with you in Jannah wherever you wish. Hadith Ikhwan is declared Sahih li ghayrihi by Sheikh Nasr al-Din al-Albani in Sahih Targheeb and Tarheeb. Upon the authority of Sulaiman ibn Buraida from his father who said that a man asked the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam are there horses in jannah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said if allah enters you into jannah then you will not wish to be brought a stallion made of red ruby that will fly with you wherever you wish except that it will occur and so another man, he responded by saying, O messenger of Allah, which is a, was apparently a Badu from the Bedouins, are there camels in Jannah? <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ did not respond with the same response as the first, but he mentioned, if Allah enters you into Jannah, then you will have whatever your soul desires and whatever your heart or whatever your eyes desire. Whatever your soul desires and whatever your heart desires, that, ayyuhal ikhwa, shall be the recompense and the reward for Ahlil Jannah, for the people of Jannah. There was one narration, ikhwan, that we wish to mention, but it appears it is a relatively lengthy narration and it appears ikhwan that i haven't brought it with me uh so we round up ikhwan uh at that on that note we ask allah azza wa jal to make us ikhwan from the people of jannah to make us from among those ikhwan who partake in that bliss who, to, who achieve and uh, and reach jannah ikhwan gardens beneath which rivers flow fruits among trees and palm trees and low trees and uh, low uh, يعني, hanging uh, uh, fruit spouses and among soil of musk and zafaran rivers of milk rivers of honey oceans of wine oceans of water that which no eye ikhwan has seen or ear has heard or it has occurred to the heart of any individual. No ikhwan that whatever bliss you receive in the dunya, it is irrelevant in comparison to the bliss that is achieved in Jannah ikhwan. But know that the door of Jannah as the self of this ummah used to say, the door of Jannah requires a key. And the key, ayyuhal ikhwa, is the establishment of tawheed. The key to Jannah is the establishment of the sunnah. The key to Jannah is in ittiba. Following the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the salaf of this ummah, following the path of the salaf of this ummah, and staying away from innovation. 
Staying away, Ikhwan, from additions, accretions. Why is it, Ikhwan? Why do we, we make this warning? Why? Except that we see that the people of Bid'ah and we understand that the people of innovation do nothing but prevent people from Jannah. Prevent people from entering. And so Ahl Sunnah, as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions, they are A'lamun nasi bil haqq wa arhamahum bil khalq. The most knowledgeable of the people with the truth and the most merciful of them to the creation. Ahl Sunnah want that, the, that mankind enter Jannah, that they receive the bliss of Jannah. That they are welcomed by those angels, Yom al Qiyamah, that their faces are radiant and illuminated. Ahlu Sunnah want that for the people. And so, Ayyuhal Ikhwa, our desire then and our dua is that Allah Azza wa Jal keeps us firm upon Tawheed, firm upon the Sunnah. And that Allah Azza wa Jal raises us among the Zumra and among the ranks of Ahlul Jannah. Those who will receive that glad tiding, Tibtum, that you were tayyib, you were good, Fadukhuluha, enter. Those, ayyuhal ikhwa, who will receive the glad tidings on a day, a day, ayyuhal ikhwa, that each and every one of us, each and every one of us will stand before the Lord of all the worlds. And then we'll go on to one of two abodes. No third. Either to the nar, iyadhan billahi min dalik, or to jannah, and gardens beneath which rivers flow. Ikhwan, we thank the brothers and sisters who have attended, and we commend you for your patience and your perseverance throughout today's lectures. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to reward all of the brothers who have participated, all of our speakers, everyone who was present, Ikhwan from our brothers who were in charge of security, those who were looking after uh, the gates and the parking, the ushers, our brothers who have dealt with the sound, those who uh, have been responsible and have helped out, and Ikhwan, for all of the brothers and sisters who have attended, and the children likewise, uh, who uh, have been quiet and have been attentive uh, and have listened throughout the lectures. As far as the children who haven't been quiet and attentive uh, and listened throughout the lectures, uh, then there are a number of years for them to grow, Ikhwan, and we'll rebuke them when they get older, inshallah. Nasa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa fikrna wa iyaakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yirda. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين